welcome back everyone and this is the chip master in this video series we're going to talk about the interface circuit right and the interface circuit are all these um, sections we're gonna I'm gonna display I'm going to explain each section as I said this is a demo video right so I'm gonna explain every single part right so first I'm just gonna go through the LVDS section right and I am going to explain the difference between EDP and LVDS but that's for the paid one I'll just explain LVDS only right we have DisplayPort we have Thunderbolt we have VGA and we have HDMI right the sound card I'll explain the network card mini PCI Express M SATA M.2 which is the new generation form factor right we have the USB we have SATA we have fan and the touchpad interface I'm going to explain every single interface right and um, some uh, maintenance techniques that you can use during the maintenance process when when uh, maintaining a problem with any of these interfaces right so first I am going to go to the LBDS section right I have here a schematic of the HP right 2000 right 1000 series right and this is the Panther point which is an Intel series 7 Intel series BD82 HM70 right SJTNV right this is the IV bridge and this is an Intel series 7 series chipset right so as you can see we have support for CRT and the HDMI we have LCM which stands for liquid crystal module right that's the liquid crisp that's for the LCD right LVDS so we're gonna take a look at this section right and this is on page 38 so let's go to page 38 okay so this is the LCD screen or the LCD connector this is the LCD interface right we call it the this is an interface circuit as you can see right and I have here an image of the board also right this is the HP 2000 1000 series see 0650 a 249 3101 MBAO2 motherboard right and I'm going to um, focus my entire video on this section here in the C, uh, the LCD connection and the different circuits that's responsible for this part of the connection all right so this is the a close-up snapshot of the image of the image of the LCD connector as you can see this is a 10 20 10 20 30 pin connection right this is a 30 pin connection as you can see right and I'm going to explain all of these little pieces of um, components such as this transistor these resistors and ceramic capacitors all right now this is a schematic of the LCD screen right as you can see this is an interface circuit right so we are um, first we're gonna look at the screen backlight power supply so the first thing that you should uh, know when troubleshooting the LCD connection if there is a backlight issue right I'm gonna explain each section right so first you have the, the screen power so the backlight power supply right the back power supply is usually 18 volts which is from adapter or 19 or 11 volts which is from battery in battery mode right so uh, looking at the schematic here as you can see see this is eight this is 19 volt or 12 volt which is coming from either adapter or battery coming through this part of PD 508 which, which will be, be renamed to be PV bat underscore LCD so this is 18 volt or 12 volt right this is coming from your adapter or from your battery all right and this PV bat underscore LCD is coming to here as you can see right normally it is connected to the first two pins of this connection right generally when troubleshooting when troubleshooting this section when troubleshooting this section it's normally on the first two pins the first the last end pins right so this one is um, connected to pin 24 so this is um, from pin number one right the pin number one mark right so pin number one right and this is a 30 pin so that's 10 20 so pin number 24 is right here right normally the end pins of the um, LCD connectors like the last set of pins the last two pins would have the connection for the LCD backlight power supply 19 volt or 12 volt but we'll stick to 19 volts since most of the time when you're troubleshooting you will really use an adapter so this is roughly 19 volts so normally the, 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 the two end pins on this LCD connector will be your 19 volt which is the LCD backlight power supply right and on the schematic we have it here which is p bat pv bat underscore lcd which is coming to this section right here as you can see okay 
so that's coming to this section here so um understanding the working principle here so this is your 19 volt coming to pin number 23 and pin number 24 right here all right so the next signal after that the next signal here we have lcd underscore bk underscore en and this is your backlight enable right so after the cpu is initialized the soft start is initialized the bios is red and it's okay and in intact right the pch will send this backlight enable signal right so once all the soft start passes are complete the graphics card is initialized the pch and the cpu is initialized io control is initialized then the lcd backlight underscore en will release from the pch and that's coming from page 38 so if i copy the signal right and lcd backlight underscore enable is normally from the pch as you can see this is the lvds section instead of the pch all this section lvds which is the compensation resistor here but that's for it that's when i'm going to explain each and every single pin in the um L the pch so see backlight pch underscore backlight underscore en so this is coming from the pch right and it's coming to our display connector right and it is connected here to the lid switch right so this is coming from the pc lcd underscore backlight underscore enable now the next signal let me zoom in one more time now the next signal as you can see here is the lcd on pch underscore lcd underscore pulse width modulation or pwm now this is the brightness adjustment right so by from the factory by default this is roughly 2.5 volt by default so this voltage is roughly 2.5 volt right and the max voltage is 3.3 .3 volt right so that's the maximum voltage for your lcd brightness adjustment so by default it is three pch underscore lcd underscore pwm is the brightness adjustment and that controls the brightness of your screen through the keyboard right and it is driven through a pulse width modulation so the lowest voltage being 2.5 volt right from the factory when it is released you will get a voltage um the backlight voltage will be 2.5 volt if you increase the brightness the maximum will be 3.3 volt this is your backlight adjustment control signal right now up the top let's go up we have the next signal we have here is the screen power supply which is the lcd vdd signal right if this signal is not coming most times you'll get white screen as i can see the screen power supply is connected to pin number one and two of this connector so pin number one and two here should have 3.3 .3 volt after the trigger so after pressing the switch on the laptop on the notebook then the 3.3 .3 volt which is powered by normally run power through a conversion circuit to become p3v3s underscore lcd so let's copy the signal and see where it's coming from normally the pch will send a backlight vdd enable signal to turn on a p channel mosfet and this p channel mosfet will switch from run power to become this power supply all right so let's go to the next part as you can see this is a circuit or oh, this one uses a, a, a dedicated chip a regulator this is known as a low drop out regulator right in my class of um in foundation electronics i'm going to teach everything you need to know about the different types of regulators such as a pwm regulator a low dropout regulator a switch regulator right switch mosfet n channel mosfet and p p channel mosfets right as you can see pch is sending the lcd underscore vdd enable right the vdd enable this is to turn on the screen power supply right so pch underscore lcd underscore lcd vdd underscore enable is coming to pin number three at the same time it is getting a supply of pv3 which is pv3 v3s which is coming to pin number five right and this is coming to power and at the same time the enable signal is coming and then after it will output this signal this is the screen power supply so that's p3 vs underscore lcd and this is going to the screen to power pin number one and two pins to power your lcd screen all right so let's go back to the lcd connector as i said before if this signal is not coming you'll get white screen the total white right and most times the chip this chip will be will be faulty this is a three led chip as you can see here this is it here is it u501 right u501 right so many times this, this chip is not working right so you get the five so first pin number one two three four and five 
right so as you can see pin number one and two normally supply pin number five would be supply pin number four will be output right all right so pin number one is output on this one right ah see pin number four right so pin number four is out this right dis pin number four is normally output pin number five is supply pin number one and two right pin number one is and um number three is enabled and pin number two is grounded right so this is the, the um this is your chip here which is known as the uh nuvo nct 3521u right and this chip many times this chip will fail when repairing widescreen fault right these two resistors are for your edid right these two resistors are for your edid signal so if these two signal if this the the the, the, the pch will read the screen information right pin number six and pin number pin number five and pin number six clock and data to read the eprom chip on the screen these two resistors you measure with oscilloscope to see the waveform and capture that waveform then you will know that the screen is being read and the graphics card is working properly right so let's go back to the lcd panel connector so here it is pch underscore lcd clock pch underscore lcd data these are your two edid the, what are they called edid right this is a edid sing signal right and this is when the graphics card is reading or the internal graphics controller is reading the screen information and this is connected to pin number six and pin number seven so the clock as we all know is pin number five right so let's get my type 2 again so the clock is pin number 5 sorry pin number 6 right and this one is, is pin number 5 so one is clock one is data so the pin number 5 right is your data right and pin number 6 is your clock right and this is your EDID signal right EDID so there's an EEPROM chip inside the screen there's an EEPROM chip inside the screen that stores the manufacturer's information the screen resolution right and all those other information about the screen and you must have the graphics card reading these two pins at the same time to in and once these two signals are being read then the next signal are your LVDS now on an LVDS connection is two pairs two pairs it's six groups right we have here PCH underscore LCD TXO. This is the zero group, first group, second group, third group. So zero, one, two. So it's three groups. A total of six lines, six wires, right? So we have a negative and a positive. That's one pair. One other pair, which is the first, the, the two second group, negative and positive, and then the third group, which is the two, which is a negative and positive. So that's three pairs of signals. So this is a differential signal that is being transmitted to the LCD panel. That's after all these working conditions are met. Right, so your 19 volt is coming, right, which is a screen power supply, right, remember, we have a screen power supply coming to pin number 24, which is coming from here, let me move this out the way, right, so this is your 19 volt supply, which is a screen power supply, screen backlight power supply. My font is a bit big. I'll have to right. So that's your screen backlight power supply here, and that's the 19 volt on this line. So this is your screen. Right. Remember, this is your PWM adjustment voltage. This is 19 volt. It is a screen backlight power supply, not the screen power supply. This is your screen power supply. So piece. This is your, your screen power supply. It's right here. Alright, this is a screen power supply, which is for the screen. If this signal is coming, as I said before, you will get white screen, right? And this is your LVDS signal. Alright, LVDS. All these are your LVDS signal, just coming from the graphics card, and this is from the PCH. Right, all these signals are coming from the PCH. If it is an discrete board, then this will be handled by the dedicated independent graphic card, right? Which it could be an AMD or an NVIDIA based graphic card right so that's for the discrete board but this is a uma board so all this display information or display interfaces is controlled by your pch right we also have here a usb right remember your your microphone is is controlled by usb so these two usb devices is for your microphone right these two usb signals are for your microphone right 
and this is your mic we also have a mic that's connected to the um sorry this is for my this is for your microphone not for the sorry all right this is for the microphone this is a microphone clock and data digital mic d stands for digital microphone right and then this and this one is for the camera all right that's for the camera all right as you can see all right this is for your microphone camera all right this is the backlight power supply all right backlight power supply pv bat underscore lcd right here we have the back this is a backlight adjustment we have the LVD signal we have our EDID signal which is coming to pin number six and pin number five then we have the screen power supply right so this is the total components that makes up our LCD right all of this see the each LVDS need a pair of clock right so this is the differential signal this is the clock signal CL underscore DN DP in positive and negative each clock each LVDS module needs a pair of clock whether it's HDMI it could be a display port LVDS you have to have clock coming in right and this is critical okay so don't get confused with this clock and this clock this clock is for reading your screen information on the EEPROM chip this is for the clock for the display only which is for a part of the LVDS module okay so this is the connector as you can see and all these are the components that makes up your LVDS so these two resistors very important right so if we copy this signal right which is PCH underscore clock let's copy this one as you can see it's coming directly from the LVDS module inside of the PCH right and it is reading the screen information right it's reading the screen information all right most boards have them connected to a resistor so you can check the, um, these these resistor i know these two resistors are basically for the clock and data you can measure any one of them right and you can re measure both of them and i uh, will see you see this you see the waveform right if you set the oscilloscope on single trigger mode and if you want to analyze and observe the waveform then you can freeze the signal and then you can observe it and see if the graphics card is reading the screen information all right this is a demo video if you want full videos you have to pay right so this uh, my videos are being edited and they are they will be soon be launched and be ready for purchase right so this is the interface circuit as you can see I only explain the LVDS right in the in the other classes I'll explain all the rest of these interfaces in detail right all right that this is the chipmaster and thanks for watching